he saw what had drawn the guard's attention. Two dark green pickup trucks bearing the logo of Pakistan Railways raced across the access road of the tracks, approaching the helicopters. Ha turned to Riyadh. Get in the helicopter. I will get rid of them. The trucks stopped just 25 yards shy of the chopper and 50 yards from the front loading dock of the warehouse. They parked next to a pair of full pool carrier cars, left parked on a spur of track at the edge of the access road, and several men climbed out of the trucks. Khan could not see how many, since their bright lights were in his eyes. He just waved to the men, motioned for them to turn around and go away, and he pulled his ISI credentials out and held them up to the light. A man stepped in front of the beams and walked closer. Khan squinted, tried to make him out. He gave up, just reached out his hand with his ISI credentials, and told the man to turn around and forget what he saw here. He never did see the man's face, and he never did recognize Muhammad al Darkur, and he never did see the pistol in the Major's hand. He saw a flash, he felt a ripping in his chest, and he knew he'd been shot. He fell backward, and as he fell, al Darkur's second shot caught him under the chin and blew out his brains from below. As soon as al Darkur killed Colonel Khan, Russell and Ryan, both having just climbed onto the coal carrier next to the trucks, opened the fire on the blue screen of the helicopter with the Chief Three rifles. While they fired at the kilo, Muhammad's two officers flanked to the right. They ran to the corner of a small switching station on the edge of the tracks. Here, they opened fire on the men in the windows of the warehouse. The LT gunman quickly had Al Darkor's men sighted, and one of the two officers was killed with an AK blast across his legs and pelvis. But the second officer took out the sentries. And when Al Darkor made it over to his position and picked up his fallen comrades G3, they suppressed the men firing at the loading door to the warehouse. Ryan and Caruso's heavy gunfire killed the pilot and co-pilot of the MIA almost immediately. Their bullets, each man fired a full 30-round magazine through the aircraft, also tore through the cabin, killing and injuring several of the ISI guards who had already boarded. Rian himself was at the chopper's door, and the gunfire, just barely heard above the sounds of the MIA's engine and rotors, made him dive to the parking lot and then roll away from the helo. His men returned fire on the gunman on the coal carrier. Five ISI men against two attackers, but the ISI men were armed with only pistols, and Jack and Dom picked them off one at a time. Rian climbed to his feet, ran behind the helicopter, and raced down an alleyway to the west of the warehouse. A surviving member of his protection detail ran behind him. Caruso and Ryan dropped from the coal container. Jack said, You and the others go for the warehouse. I'm going after Rian. The two Americans ran off in separate directions.